The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to the Lord's house. We begin our worship this morning, the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 738. consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins. And lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for, for you, rather, and for his sake, forgive you all of your sins. As a coloring servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. I lift up my eyes to the hills, and where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade on your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all evil, he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and abide forever in your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, just a reading for this day, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and, in, and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have the, that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command, If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. At this time, the choir will sing.
please rise as we join together and sing in our Alleluia in our verse and for our gospel lesson. Some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must take first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. And before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to med meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you will be put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that in its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and the trees. And we stop there. Your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together this morning in the confession of our Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the cross. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We join again this singing in our next hymn, hymn number 508.
God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our Gospel lesson. While some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the signs when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. There will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle in your, therefore in your minds not to meet, meditate beforehand on how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up, even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, your redemption is drawing near. When our Lord spoke these words and the people heard, of course, some understood and many others did not. But even here as he's speaking to them, talking about the end, again, some understood and some did not. Because of that one phrase in our text here, in that first section that I just read, the end will not be at once. These things have to happen. But do not be terrified. We know that we live in the last times. We know that because Jesus died and rose, and from his resurrection until the Lord returns, these are the last times. We know that as Scripture proclaims, there will be many who will turn from the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because many, as he says, will come in Jesus' name. Remember, the problems for the church come from within, not from without. These who come in Jesus' name are false prophets, false leaders, false pastors, and so forth and so on. Because the Lord has said so. It sounds really good. It sounds almost as if it is Jesus himself. Right? I am he. But he's not. They are not. They are false Christs. They are not real. There is no need to wonder because we know that they are going to come. There is no need to be afraid of them because their message is false. We know what the truth is. He has given it to us. Which is why the Lord says that even though there will be these horrible events that are going to take place, even persecution and death and so forth, the Lord says that these witnesses, the apostles, the disciples other than the apostles, and even all the way down to us, we are going to have to be prepared to do what He gives us to say. See, that's why we study the Word of God as we do, so that we are prepared, as even Peter says, that we are to be prepared to be able to give a reason for the hope that we have. The early church believers? Yes. 
their lives. They did not know how long they were going to live as a Christian because they were constantly under persecution. But notice again, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. That's verse 19. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. It always sounds strange, I know, to our ears when we say something like that because, again, if we die, we know that life is over, at least as we see it. But even here, the Lord says in verse 18, even though you will be persecuted, even though you will die, but not a hair of your head will perish. Because, again, the Lord is speaking of that second death, the death in hell for eternity. For those who walk in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yes, we will die. But yet, we will live. That's His promise to us. So, be ready. These things are going to take place. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes and famines and so forth, and pestilences in various places. Terrors and great signs. But it's not the end. Not yet. Oh, the end, we will know it because the Lord has said, that's when what? Well, we go on. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are in the, out in the country enter it, for these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among the nations in Jerusalem. We trampled underfoot by the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Prophets were killed for speaking against the holy city of Jerusalem and against the people of Israel. Even though it was God who sent those prophets, faithful prophets, as we know in the word that he has given to us. But see, again, the key is these are the days of vengeance. Sadly, we know what unbelief looks like because that's what we were born into. We see it around us all the time. But that is exactly what separates believers from unbelievers. Belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the Spirit that He has given to us, now we are aware of these real events in the lives of real people, ourselves included, that he is speaking about. Even though he's prophesying also of the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, which you all well know, because you've heard it all the time at this time of the year as we're slowly coming to the conclusion of another church year. Over and over the prophets were warning the people Turn from their ways. What were their ways? Idolatry. They forgot their God. The God who rescued their relatives from Egypt. Their God who gave them the promised land. Their God. Who every one of His prophecies had been and will be fulfilled. We read from Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 8. Be warned, O Jerusalem, lest I turn from you in disgust, lest I make you a desolation and an uninhabited land. Yes, Jeremiah took a lot of grief for that message. But he had no choice. He spoke only what was given to him to speak. Micah, chapter 3, beginning verse 9. 
Hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, who detest justice and make crooked all that is straight, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Its heads give judgment for a bribe. Its priests teach for a price. Its prophets practice divination for money. Yet they lean on the Lord and say, Is not the Lord in the midst of us? No disaster shall come upon us. There because, therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. That's just two, t- that's just two of those small prophecies that the Lord gave to the prophets of old to wake up the people of Israel. But not just them, but to wake us up as well. To wake up the world to the fact that one day the Lord is going to return, which is why the text goes on. And there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth, the stress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up. Raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. See, we see in Paul's letters, he says that many times we are to encourage each other with the words that he was given by the Holy Spirit even though those words were sometimes very scary and are even for us. Literally dealing with, even here in our text, life and death. You see, that's why he gives us these words. He shows us the unbeliever's reaction to what is going on here, the horrors of the unexplainable. And it's only unexplainable because they don't believe. Remember when Jesus says, I told you, right? I mean, he could have said, I told you a million times. He doesn't, because he doesn't do that. But he could be just that way and say, I told you, because we know ahead of time what is going to take place. It's right here. But the unbelievers are running around freaking out because they don't understand why, why, why. They think they can do things on their own. We'll make peace and everything will be nice. It'll be a utopia here on earth. Nope. It's never going to be. There are always going to be wars, pestilences, famines, earthquakes, and so forth as Scripture says, because of sin. And as long as the world denies sin, they will remain in unbelief. But we already know. All of this has to take place because we're still waiting for that one event that hasn't happened that Scripture says will, just read it, our Lord and His return. See, that's why for a Christian, the reaction is entirely different than that of the unbeliever. We know the ending. And we believe it. Because He told us. Our Savior, who died and rose, has now given us these words of comfort. Straighten up. Raise your heads. Your redemption is drawing near. In Jesus' name, Amen. Will you please rise for prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, as we, your people, have gathered once again into your house, we thank you, we praise you, For you are truly the one, our own redemption, that we are looking to each and every day. For you have saved us through your own shed blood. For yes, we will die, 
and yet we know that we will live. Bless us now, Father, and keep us in the way that you have given to us through your word. Allow us to be a congregation here in this place, that we may proclaim the name of your Son, that others may hear and also desire to know what we have been given by you. This joy and peace of our salvation, even in the midst of the persecutions and famines and pestilences and earthquakes and wars that will take place until your return. We thank you, Father, that we are able to believe that it is going to take place. Your Son will return and we will be with him forever. Gracious Father, be with those this day who lead us in our government. Be watching over our President and the Congress. Be with the governor of our state, his legislature, the mayor of our village and its board. Father, we thank you for those who serve in the military, all the different branches. Watch over them, protect them, keep them, and if it be your will, bring them home in quickly in time of peace. And yet always, your will be done. Father, we ask that you will also continue to be with our church body, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Be watching over the pastors and teachers and all the other, uh, those who lead our congregations, that they may give you thanks and praise. Be with our synodical president, our district president, and our circuit visitor. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you will also be with all of the places of education in our synod, from our preschools to our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn may truly be a blessing one to another and to you. Gracious Father, we lift up those in our hearts this day. We ask that you will continue to be with Stormy Belts as she remains in hospital. Gracious Lord, be watching over this little one. Grant her strength as only you can give. Be watching over her and allow her to receive that which she needs each day and that she may return home to, to her family and home as quickly as possible, leaving the hospital. Gracious Father, we ask that you will also be with Kendall Falk as she remains in hospital in, in St. Louis. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing the doctors to find the situation in her life. And now during this time of chemotherapy, that you will be a blessing to her, that you will strengthen her body and continually remind her and her family the true joy and peace of our salvation in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Gracious Father, for those who continue also to need our prayers that are on our list, we ask that you will be a blessing to them, keeping them and allowing them to also know the Savior, Jesus Christ and the comfort and peace that only you can give in the midst of suffering in this life. Gracious Heavenly Father, be with us now as we continue to give you thanks and praise through the very body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we know that our sins are forgiven and that we may stand before you in the confidence of your Son. Be with us now and keep us as only you can do. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continue now with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly good, right, and sanitary that we should all times and places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you shall freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, King of all creation, for you've had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. 
Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which his betrayed took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do, in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament, and my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This goes off as you drink in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
as we join together in the singing of the Nunc the Menace. us the same Terry gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Just two brief announcements, just a reminder that if you have not signed up yet for the uh, 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 Ladies Aid Christmas party, please do so. That sign up sheet is in the back. And also, it isn't really meant to be a, a well-kept secret, but uh, we're starting a new Bible class this morning over at Grace, which is for both Grace and St. Paul. We are going to be going through the small catechism, and as you can see time-wise, it'll be an introductory day today. So if somebody you know wants to be part of it, please allow, uh, tell them, and they'll uh, you know, they come next Sunday as well, uh, because we're going to be going through the small catechism as well as the Word of God uh, for quite a while and studying the Word that He's given to us. So let's join together now in the singing of our closing hymn and Muriel. Let's do stanzas one and six, all right? One and six. <laughs> <laughs> 